so you know just just to round things out man to bring it back we got to talk about you know what led to ultimately closing the doors of Def Jux publicly that's related to you know business it's related to you know not enough money coming in to keep keep the doors open me and you have talked about this primarily as a creative endeavor mm. and i'm interested in at what point you had to start paying attention to the numbers and 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 not able to be fully uh, about the creative well oh, man i mean it was it was something that presented itself in the last you know, a couple of years. Mm-hmm. We did just for 10 years. Yeah. And um, I don't remember exactly. A lot of it I've blocked out of my, my sure. head yeah. in terms of detail. But I just remember that it started getting harder to pay the bills. All that shit is real. All that shit is true. And it's dry and it's boring. But I mean, you know, again, the story's out there, but it's the same story that a lot of other record labels have had, unfortunately. No matter how many times you hear the story, you're not prepared for when it happens to you, which is that you grew bigger, but now you're, you're making less money. So you don't know how to keep the shit afloat. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the business part of it. And then and that ended up being something that ultimately is the reason why the door closed, mm-hmm. because we couldn't live up to what our end of the bargain anymore. We couldn't keep it afloat. But then there was a parallel thing which was going on, which was, which was me, which is that I was in a bad place. I, I was wrecked from the Kamun shit for mm-hmm. sure. It had taken a lot of toll on my myself, on my relationships with a lot of the people around me, just in terms of it being a cloud. Just a lot of uh, unhappiness, feeling like I was not able to even have some time to do what I wanted to do creatively. Like I had started the label with all the best intentions, but it was taking me a long time to make records. Because I was spreading myself really thin and I was investing myself not only in terms of my time, but also emotionally in other people's records and shit. And it was hard too. You know, I wasn't necessarily ready to be the dude that people were like, I'm the fuck you. I'm not happy. And I'm right. like, ah, fuck. Here we go. You know, like, and if you, you try, you try and do it correctly. You know, you try and do what you can to, do, to be honorable about it. And even in the face of your fuck ups. And it's like, yo, you're not happy. I'm not happy either. Straight up, no doubt. It was just l- less and less happy for me with the whole shit. I was just like, you know, this is great, and I'm glad I was a part of this, but the time for me to be able to be this person that's needed for this gig right here, I, I couldn't do it anymore. It wasn't, it wasn't right for me, for my mental health. It wasn't right for my music. I couldn't make enough music. And I was dealing with grief, and I was dealing with stress mm-hmm. simultaneously, and also I was broke. Word. So it was, it was, you know, it was a tough combination of things. And, and I think about this, I don't know if I would have had the strength to say Death Jux is dead because I kept that company alive um, purely with like, <laughs> like intention. You know force what I mean? Will, like it yeah. was like force of will. It had become conflated in my head with if this doesn't work, then I fail and the mild shit is, is, is bullshit. Right. And it wasn't working. It was starting to become impossible. Everything was putting out a fire. It was an emergency. It was paying a bill. <laughs> you know, it was like how we, you know, you borrow some money to pay some money. And that's like the American way and shit. But eventually, if you're a sensitive artist and you're <laughs> trying to fucking, you know, you're trying to like live, they might fuck with you. Combine, with, combine that with a healthy dose of drugs and, and alcohol and you've got yourself a classic meltdown on the, you know, right, <laughs> on the way. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, so sometimes I'm like, oh, thank God. Thank God this shit just didn't work financially because I don't know if I would have, I don't think I would have wanted to subject anyone to the meltdown that was probably going to come. Here's a, a question though. So you said like it's a classic story. Label gets too big. But it's making less money. Can you help like walk me through like and not not in terms of any particular projects or anything like that but like what is the mechanism by which you start making less money after you get a certain size like i don't like people gotcha, stopping gotcha. buying physical product gotcha. it was right at that point when the shit went boosh in terms of people buying physical right. and streaming was not generating the money that it is today right they had that hadn't been figured out yet it just wasn't big enough it right. wasn't big enough so you're selling less physical but the money wasn't being made up for the way it's supposed to. It's like, all right, if we're not doing physical, we got to get paid digitally, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. So it took a long time, man. Only in the last, like, I would say five, six years, maybe more, maybe seven has, has it really become what it is to the industry. And, um, we were right in that sweet spot. Like a lot of labels were, where it just, it definitely hit. 
And we were putting records out that weren't doing well. And we were staffed up. That's why I say it's a classic story God. because that's happened to a lot of labels. You kind of blow up and then you're like, fuck, I guess we should hire people to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you do it. And then you're a real record label with real bills and real and real payroll and all that shit. And then the chart starts to go like this. So you had more money in the beginning when you had nobody and were just randomly selling records. It's economics, man. Mm -hmm. It's economics. It couldn't work out anymore. And it was tough. I felt very personally responsible for everything because I had told people, roll me, I'm going to do this. And I wanted to do it right. And so it was a tough thing to deal with. But at the same time, I knew that there was this other voice in me, which was mm. like, um, you're not making music, man. Like, mm. you're not, there was just something telling me. And, and I had lost a little bit of the magic of the whole thing when Kamu died. And right. uh, as I think did everybody. I really do. Yeah, it was just tough on everybody. And it was tough on the relationship for everybody. Uh, just, to, just to end this off the best we can, like you know, speaking to you now, and I, and I, and damn, am I telling am I telling a depressing story right now? <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. Yes. It's just sometimes the truth is it's fucking truth. dark. You know what I'm saying? And I think, and I think that's like that's as good for everybody to hear, man. People fucking love this music. People have all of these thoughts and feelings about some shit that they were in no way actually connected to. So it's great to hear, like you know, what happened to get that insight into it. And speaking to you now, you know, I know you go through the shit you go through, but you don't seem fucking you don't seem n anywhere near as close to the bottom <laughs> as you were then <laughs> <laughs> and so like i think i think it Thanks, might be man. Good yeah i'm shredding <laughs> it might be good for people to hear like just if as 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 much as you could sum it up the path back to some sort of fucking balance after you were in that space i can look back at it now and look back at those relationships and those moments and those and as like this amazing period of time in which i got to do art with people that i really wanted to do art with and there was an excitement and a thrill about it and i think that we represented something really good and i also am really glad that i could personally just fucking recognize finally when it was time to move on quite honestly and it's not something i can look back on and um regret in any way because i feel really lucky to have been around and to have been in contact with a lot of these people especially at certain moments in their artistic careers i wouldn't trade that that being said you're right i am not anywhere near as rock bottom as i as i was and <laughs> that was hard fought you know what i mean i went through a lot to get there it was like you know i was a little bit lost after that whole shit yeah. um after that whole thing um you know, went down and I kind of, this thing I had worked on for like 10 years just was gone. And I just was at a crossroads. It was a rough year, maybe right, you know, the year after just went under essentially where we had to shut of the doors. And, you know, I, I didn't have any dough. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any dough and I didn't have any direction. I was definitely, you know, living on, off, uh, you know, uh, an egg sandwich a day and facing like for the first time being like, well, what the, f you know, what the fuck am I going to do? And, um, yeah, the, the strain of, 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 of all of that stuff and the reality has left me in a little bit of a humble place, mm -hmm. I think. And it really changed me. Uh, I feel like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm Really lucky that it happened to me when it did. I think that I needed to change. And of course, look, I'm just saying my perspective. Yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah. My story about it is that I needed to take a step back. I needed to stop everything and yeah. just think about music again. And, and it was something that I discovered about myself. I don't want to get super fucked up anymore because now I can make music and I don't want to fucking, I was filling my time with a whole bunch of negative shit at the end, you know, for a while I was really just kind of trying to lose myself. It all basically, like I said, led to the, the realization that for me, it was just about music and it's always been about music. And that's why I really focus my time on that now, truly and purely as I can. You don't have to argue about it. I don't have to question it. I don't have to, you know, it's there. It's, it's what I've always wanted. And it's there for me. So I'm very lucky. I'm lucky, man, because I got to I got to shift and have that realization. If I hadn't had that realization, then I don't think you would have heard on the jewels. You wouldn't right. have heard my next solo record. So um, I had all these fears and shit. And I was like, I didn't know if anyone wanted to fuck with me anymore. Mm -hmm. If maybe my time had passed. If maybe the sound was never going to really click with anyone beyond who it had clicked with. Once you get uh, humbled a little bit as an adult. 
you kind of lose your fear of that shit again. You know, it, you like remember what it's like to not have any money again. Mm. You know, you're like, oh, right. I spent plenty of time not having any money. <laughs> I know. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I can deal with this. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll work my way, you know, uh, out of this. And my whole point is I don't look at it bitterly. I don't look at it. Um, I look at it for what it was, which was just a fucking experiment for 10 years. That was am- amazing. Had amazing moments. And you know, also had really hard moments. Yeah. And I think, you know, even it just for the sake of these conversations, like I said, could talk about this forever, but I do think it's important to close the door on it so we can move on to actually talking about music again. You know what I'm saying? I just want you to be able to move on. <laughs> That's really the... <laughs> Oh,